All right, hello everyone, my name is Steven Bruno. I'm a product designer here in Chicago, and I'm here to talk to you about my journey through space with Python. If you paid attention to the news at all last month, you may have seen this image, the now famous first image of a black hole. Um, if you know about this, a lot of people know that there were incredibly talented researchers and this complex network of telescopes set up in order to make this a reality. But what fewer people know is that a lot of the code used to actually generate this image was written in Python with a lot of libraries that I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. Python is used extensively in space applications in astronomical science, aerospace engineering. Um, I'm very interested in space, interested in Python, wanted to merge those together. Um, if you didn't know, space is very large though, so I had to <laughs> narrow down my interests into three overarching objectives. The first being transit photometry to detect exoplanets. The second and third being machine learning to detect exoplanets or habitable planets. Uh, we'll just jump right in. First of all, what is transit photometry? Transit, you know, movement, photometry, is the measurement of light. What you see here is some planets orbiting around a star, basically. Um, one interesting thing that happens during that time is you can observe the light coming from the star, and whenever you know the orbiting body goes between the observer and the star, there's a dimming in the light. Um, this orbiting happens enough times, and you see this periodic motion and you can kind of detect that there's an orbiting body there. Uh, the NASA Exoplanet Archive provides a lot of this time series data for the bright brightness levels of various stars at a given time. Um, I took some of this data, did some seaborne stuff to it. Um, you can end up generating these time series plots and I'm kind of going through several of them now. Each box is its own star. But eventually, you look close enough, and you can start to see this periodic motion in some of them, which is a good indicator that it, is, uh, it has an orbiting star going around, or an or orbiting planet going around the star. Next thing I wanted to look at was uh, machine learning models to detect habitable planets or exoplanets in general. Um, you can see my objectives were given a star and its stellar features, those being things like the gravity, the radius, the mass, uh, temperature. Can you predict whether it has an exoplanet orbiting it or a habitable planet orbiting it? In traditional classification problems, you'll see that, uh, like supervised classification, you're given apples and pears, determine if this new thing's an apple or a pear. Unsupervised, here's some data, cluster it somehow. Um, in my case, I need to deal with one class classification, which is you have these stars, which definitely have an orbiting exoplanet or orbiting habitable planet, but you don't know what the negatives are, so you just have one class to work with in order to sort of train your models. Uh, I went through several different approaches to try to, you know, create a predictor that would look at a star and its features, and given that data, sort of predict you know, whether it has an exoplanet or a, a habitable exoplanet. Um, what I found during, I tried uh, one class SVM, a couple of different implementations of random forest, and then this cool thing called uh, PU bagging, which is you have positive and unlabeled examples, and you do some stuff. And then eventually you try to get a predictor that predicts the, whether it has an exoplanet or a habitable planet. I was unsuccessful in that none of these models really gave a great score. Um, but I basically learned that maybe there isn't a way, my current working theory is that there's not a way to develop models to detect these, which kind of makes sense because you shouldn't really be able to predict um, these planets based on just things like the mass or radius of the star. Um, I'm gonna skip over this. Thank you to the organizers, thank you to my mentor especially. Here's some links for me. Thank you all.
questions? Then I'm going to start with mine. What's a question that you asked your mentor? I recently asked him what is a ROC AUC metric, and I sort of know now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes. Uh, could you repeat where the um, where the uh, data source was? Yeah. Where you taking measurements? The question is, where did the data come from? There's something called the NASA Exoplanet Archive, and they have a whole lot of interesting time series data and stellar data and a lot of different things. So if you just Google NASA Exoplanet Archive, that's where all the data comes from. Yes, right here. How did you uh, come up with your training examples? Is the archive label this one has an exoplanet? So that's an interesting question. It did label it, this one has an exoplanet, but for when I tried to do a model for has a, an exoplanet that's also habitable, I had to look to another data set and then sort of merge that data set in with the stuff from the exoplanet archive in order to develop those labels for the habitable ones. But it did already come with, yes, this one has a habitable, I mean, this one has an exoplanet in general. Yep. So if you think that just star mass or whatever you had weren't enough features to actually build a cohesive uh, classifier, what features would you like to add if you say you could gather every day that you wanted? Oh, I haven't thought about that. You're saying what features would I like to add if I had yeah, like an opportunity to add more? Charge and asset, and this is the question you want to answer. Uh, yeah, I'd have to think about that more. Sorry. <laughs> Big round of applause. Thank you.